Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church on such a beautiful Sunday morning. Aren't you glad you're here, wherever you are? So we're going to start our service right now by singing our opening chant, One with the One. Well, good morning. good morning. We are so delighted that you have joined us in person or via Facebook or Zoom. For those of you who are in person, please be sure to silence your cell phones. We appreciate that. Thank you. Ah, so I tell you what, let's go ahead and set the tone and join together in prayer, shall we? So we breathe in a deep awareness that there is one power and one presence, infinite, loving, giving, creating. It is beautiful. It is the truth of life. It is God. And I know that this presence and this power is absolutely the most true thing about each one of us, for we are surrounded and filled by it, and we are defined and divined by it. And as we know this about ourselves and for each other, I speak the word now for the perfect unfoldment of this service today. I know that everyone is moved and uplifted by the music. I know that Sam and Karen and Darius are the perfect vehicles for that which we are needing, which we are wanting, and which our souls are so happy to receive. I know that all of our technology is seamless and wonderful. What a gift. And I also know that the words that flow through Dr. Mark are exactly what our hearts need to hear, what our spirits are asking to align with. How wonderful that that is so. And I know that that which needs to be heard today is heard, and that which needs to be expressed is absolutely done so in right and perfect order, and that we are all lifted up, that we are all blessed by it, and that we are all... Uh, that we all show up shining, bright, and beloved. So I am grateful to know that this is so, and I simply release this word into the law of mind, God's perfect law. We let it be so, and together we say, Amen. Amen. Be 
Would you please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And would you remain standing? We're going to sing our congregational song, which is, What a Wonderful World. And isn't it... five minutes. And I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. Now if your mind wanders, that's wonderful, that's fine, just bring it back gently. 
and silently repeat, God's the love that I am, and I will bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
Well, good morning. Thank you for being here with us today. If you're on Zoom, on Facebook, or in the flesh, we are so happy to have you with us. I'm going to talk today a little bit about this idea of speaking your word. This is really foundational to what we teach in the science of mind, because we teach that your word um, is what initiates creation. It's what initiates something new in your life. So when you speak your word, when you say something about yourself or life or the world that we live in, the law of mind responds to that and starts to set about creating that. So what we want to learn to do is to speak our word in the most creative, life-affirming way possible. I remember when I was a kid, and, and actually as I get older, I realize more and more of this, that so much of what my parents taught us when we were children was principle. And what my mother used to say to us all the time was that if you can't say, if you don't have anything good to say about someone or something, don't say anything. Did you hear something like that? I, I did. I'll, you know, anything about that? It's like, well, that's very principled. Why is that principled? Because you don't, you know, what you focus on increases, right? And so what you give your attention to is going to expand. And so if I speak my word in the negative, what's going to expand is what's negative. If I speak my word about what I don't want or how difficult life is, that's what's going to expand in my experience. So I don't know that my mother was actually intentionally teaching us spiritual principle at the time, but now that I have um, the awareness that I have, I can see, wow, that was, that was actually a very, very principled thing. See, because you're you and me, our thoughts and words have power. The creative power in our life is, is through the word that we speak. And this is, like I said, central. It's absolutely foundational to the science of mind teaching. Your thought determines your actions. Your thought determines your attitudes. Your thought determines how you view yourself and how you view the world that we live in. So your thoughts are actually making your destiny right now. You know. I think we have to pay attention not only to what we uh, take in, like as far as reading or listening uh, and stuff, but, but also it's what we think about. Why? Because your life will always follow your thinking. If you look back at your life and you think of times that were maybe the worst times, I guarantee you that what preceded those worst times was the worst thinking you've done. And by the same token, if you look back over your life and you look at what were maybe some of the best times or the best experiences that you had, I guarantee you that what preceded those best experiences was a more uplifted, constructive, life-affirming kind of thinking. See, because thoughts for us are like magnets. Do you remember when you were a kid and we had those horseshoe magnets? They were you know, about so big and it was shaped like a horseshoe and part of it was red and part of it was yellow. And we would take like little metal shavings and move them around or, or paper clips and see how many we could get the magnet to hold. Um, it, I admit it was simple, but it was fun at the time. What can I tell you? I mean, <laughs> so, but just like those magnets, you know, we draw to us what we focus on the most, right? So don't worry about that occasional stray, crazy thought. It's what you focus on the most. So if, if what is our primary focus is loving and joyful, that's what we'll attract. Because you always attract what you are, what you're about, you know, because of what you think. Right? So people often ask about our emotions and where do the emotions fit in and how do the emotions affect us. The, the if thought affects our emotions. Okay, We feel the way we have been thinking. Before we have an emotion, there is always a thought that slips in there first. You should feel bad here. You should feel good here. You should feel proud here. You should be depressed here. The thought always comes in before the emotion. So you want to feel happy. You want to feel loved. I know I certainly do. Then what we have to do is we have to think happy. We have to think loving thoughts, right? You can't remain down, depressed, and discouraged unless you keep thinking down, depressed, and discouraging thoughts. Right? So one of the things I learned um, uh, is that it's helpful uh, during this time of COVID. I, I, I actually think I figured out a couple more things in, in the big uh, <laughs> unfoldment of life. And one of them is if I'm congested in here, in my thinking, if my thinking is bad, if my thinking is negative or depressed, one of the best things I can do is to move my body. 
So I'll get up and take a walk around the block, or I'll take the dog out, or I'll you know, run up and down the stairs a few times, down to the basement and put in some laundry, and then upstairs and do that. And, and I find that the actual physical moving helps change my mental state. So success or failure in life, I think, begins in our thoughts. So ask yourself, and, and everyone do this now, what do I dwell on? What are the things that I dwell on the most? Because that's what's increasing. That's what's expanding. And that is another way of saying what I'm focusing on, what I'm dwelling on, is the word that I'm speaking. People say, well, I just have these thoughts. Right? I've heard people say that again and again. Well, you know, I just have these thoughts, Dr. Mark. It's so, like, hey, you chose them. Choose something else. Well, they just creep in. Well, then intentionally plant something else in your mind. See, because you decide what you entertain in your mind. You're the keeper at the gate. And so if something is inside the gate and it does not serve you, it becomes your job to eject it. Right? Just because uh, some strange, destructive, negative, self-defeating thought comes into your head does not mean you have to feed it. Right? It doesn't mean you have to give it a home. Get rid of it. Cast it out. Dismiss, delete, discard, cancel, cancel, cancel. That's what I say to myself a million times a day. Then what? Replace it with something good. See, because your subjective mind has a memory for every thought you've ever had. They're all in there. They're all in your subjective. It's like your subjective mind is like the library of your life. And everything that's ever been said to you, everything you've ever said, is in that library of your subjective mind. So we have to be careful which ones, which thoughts we're going to choose to run with, right? You choose, and it is a choice. I really believe it's a choice that we make sometimes to dwell on a negative. And it will affect our emotions. It will affect our attitudes. It will ultimately affect our actions. And it will suck the energy, strength, and life right out of you. Now, I understand. Everybody gets temporarily discouraged. We all have those experiences. Uh, we were a little depressed. Everybody has a bad day. We all fall down, but don't stay down. That's the important thing, is that we don't stay down. Nobody is making you anything. Isn't that wonderful to know that the power all resides in you? Nobody is making you anything. Nobody's making you unhappy. Nobody's making you depressed. Nobody's making you negative. If those are your experiences, know that on some level, some part of you must be choosing that. So to get out, you have to recognize that the only person who can help me is me. It's true. Speak your word. I can do this. See, because this is one of those things. Whatever we say after I becomes true for us. I can't do it. I'm overwhelmed. I'm not enough. And the universe says, yes, yes, it's true. You are not enough. Yes, it's true. You are overwhelmed. Yes, it's true. You can't do this. But by the same token, if you say, I can do this, I know that I'm enough, I'm good enough because I'm part of God, then that will absolutely be your experience. See, a very difficult part of the spiritual journey is this constant taking responsibility for our life. Everything in our life starts with a thought and then moves into action. So, you know, this is not about blaming ourselves or anybody else. We just take responsibility. And what we take responsibility for, we can heal, we can change, we can grow. If we take responsibility. But we won't be free and healthy without taking this level of responsibility. See, it's never the circumstances that have us down. That's what we tell ourselves. Well, I'm depressed because of this. Well, I'm sad because of that. Well, I'm just blue because blah, blah, blah. It's not it. That's not it. It's never the circumstances that have us down. It's our thoughts about the circumstances. See, and it's time to think about what you think about, right? It's time for, what am I thinking about? Where does my mind always want to go? So ask yourself again today, what am I dwelling on? Am I dwelling on problems or am I dwelling on that there is a solution? Am I dwelling on that there's trouble here or am I dwelling on something new that I'm in the process of creating? Am I dwelling on all the challenges I have or am I dwelling on, you know, there have been a lot of successes too. Right? So how you are seeing life makes all the difference in your world. Because we all bring something to the seeing, don't we? We all, if you know, if you're in a good mood, everything is beautiful, isn't it? And if you're in a lousy mood, nothing is good enough, right? But I'm here to tell you that we are in charge of that, right? I'm not suggesting that, this, that we engage in kind of an unhealthy kind of denial or ignoring or pretending. We all go through the valley of the shadow, right? But don't pitch a tent. That's what we say. You know, there's a greater spiritual truth here than the negative appearances, you know? And I will focus on that spiritual truth until it bursts forth 
from consciousness into form, because that's where it starts. Everything starts inside before it moves outside. Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That's interesting to me. I have overcome the world. Hmm. We choose our attitude. There's principle. The spiritual principle is involved. Uh, he also said, he that is within me is greater than he that is within the world. So what that says to me is that the spirit of truth within us is greater than the experiences we see out here in the world around us. God in us is greater than any external chaos or negative. And if you are telling yourself, I would feel better or happier when my situation changes, here's a little insight for you. No, you won't. You really won't. You won't. I know that's what you're telling yourself, but here's the thing. The reason I say you won't is because it's not in your consciousness. See, how you will feel better is by feeling better. How you will feel happier is by feeling better. It's not um, based on an external thing, because what we know about externals is externals are always changing. They come, they go, they come, they go. You know, you have, um, if you are someone who has a lousy outlook, you will have a lousy experience of life, I'm sorry. But you can change your outlook, and you can keep it changed. Any and all of us can. If your basic mode of operation in life tends toward the negative, don't expect things to be changing for the better. That's just not the way the universe is wired. You can't be negative, and there's another thing. You can't be negative enough that things actually get better. And it's funny to me that sometimes people think they can that they can just get so down on themselves and so down on other people and down on life and down on this and down on that that they think they'll do that enough and somehow God's going to take pity on them. And it's like, no, it's not going to happen, right? You, you change your thought and start to focus on the good, the good that's in your life right now. All right? And this is not to say there aren't things we all want to improve because I know there are, but... More is working than not working right now. I'm sure that's so for everybody. So change your thinking and start to focus on not only the good in you, but also the God that is in you. And it all starts in our mind. You know, if you don't think you can be happy, you can't. If you don't think you can be loved, you can't. Prosperous, successful, healthy. If you don't think those things are available to you, they will not be. Not because God says, nope, I'm just not going to give you the health you want. It's because the universe says, well, you don't believe you can have it. And the only way you can have something is to believe it. It's that simple. Remember, it's done unto you as you believe. Right? So continually choose to keep your mind on the good, the beautiful, the positive, the uplifting. God is not negative. Right? You know, God is not a downer. You know, thinking that makes you feel bad it, it, is not of God. Right? That, that all things work together for good for those who love God. That's what it says in the Bible. So in a difficulty, we often go to that negative mindset first. You know, in adversity or in a problem, oh, God, my problem is so big. My problem is so big, God. You're not, this, is a, this, one's, you're, this is going to be work for you. You know, I mean, this is going to be bigger. That is when to choose, I've got to be strong. I've got to not give in. I have to move forward, not in reverse. See, because you choose the way you want to go. And so, so how do I want to see this? How do I want to respond to this situation? How do I want to handle this? I think I learned about speaking my word very young. I remember um, I was in high school. Uh, I think I was a freshman or a sophomore in high school, something like that. And I wanted to work at this IMCA, a YMCA camp. And, uh, and there was no reason why I should have gotten a job there. There really was absolutely no reason, except I kept saying, I'm going to work at YMCA camp. I'm going to work at the YMCA camp. And you know what? They actually hired me. You know? I thought, wow. So everybody else saying, oh, don't get your hopes up. You're going to be disappointed. You should get a job as a bag boy or deliver a newspaper or something like that. It's like, no, I wanted to work at the YMCA camp. And I kept saying that, and I got hired. And I thought, that was interesting to me. And so then I did that again and again and again with other things. There was, uh, the next summer, there was another job I wanted at a different camp. And against all odds, I got hired to do that as well. And um, I remember thinking, there is something to this. And I've always um, think, I, I think I feel like I'm very visually oriented. 
And so I was always like cut out little pictures and you know thumbtack them up above my desk on my little bulletin board there. And I'd sit at my desk doing my homework and I'd look at those pictures, you know, and I'd look at those pictures and say, that's where I'm gonna go, that's what I'm gonna experience, that's what I'm gonna have. And sure enough, it worked again and again and again. And what I realized when I came into Science of Mind is that I was speaking my word. And how I speak my word is by what I say, yes, but also by what I see and what I focus on and the feeling that I can generate to support that, all of that contributes to the speaking of our word. You know, in the Bible it says, in the beginning was the word, right? That the, out of the word, God created all that is seen and unseen. Hmm. There are people, it seems to me, who always focus on what's wrong. I think we have to guard our mind around pessimists, but there are also people who the scale is always tipped on more things are right in their life. And if you look at these people, if you observe them, you will notice that they seem to be a little bit happier, that life seems to work a little better for them. You know, the Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You do your mind, right? You handle the renewing of your mind and spirit transforms your life. That's what happens. So my job is always to keep transforming my mind, changing my mind, changing my thinking, uplifting my thinking, and then spirit that is infinite within us says, wow, he's really serious about this. Transformation can take place. You don't have to accept or dwell on every thought that pops into your mind. Hmm? I, I thought that was a revelation when I realized just because I have a thought doesn't mean I have to run with it, right? I think now, all right, is this thought from God? How will I know it's from God? It will predominantly be loving, right? Or is it destructive to me or another person? If it's destructive to me or another person, I know that thought is not from God. See, because our limited thought always limits our life. Now, God is not limited. Sometimes my faith is limited, I admit. And so then it becomes my job to increase, to expand my faith. God has to have a little room to work, right? So I have to provide the faith for that. The room is our mind, right? It can't be full of negatives. If you believe the negatives and the lies, it will be hard to rise above them, right? So I know... Um, that you've heard me say this, that Quimby, who was one of the founders of New Thought, said that everybody comes into life like a blank slate, and everybody we meet writes something on that slate. Mm -hmm. And he says, goes on and says, I know some people have written some pretty unkind things on my slate, but the good news is we're in charge of that slate, so we get to wipe it off. We get to erase, wash off that board, you know, and we don't have to keep that no matter what has been said. You know, it's like you can have the best computer in the world, you know, but if you program it with the wrong software or a virus gets in there, it's just not going to function correctly. So for all of us, I want to remind us that more is working than not working. And that right there is a sign of good consciousness, right? It's that, it's that wonderful thing from Emmett, Key, ra from Emmett Fox. Rather than think about the problem, let's just think about God instead. You see, our words become a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's the thing. Our words are always becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. Do you want that prophecy or not? It's up to you. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, recognizing that right here where we are, the Spirit of God, the living Spirit Almighty, that presence of love and wisdom that creates the entire universe out of itself is right where we are. We are emanations of God consciousness. And in this awareness of our connection with God, I further know that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life, in the mind, in the heart that is God. There is only one, and we're all it. So in this awareness of our connection with God and each other, I speak the word for each and every one of us that we are aware of the power of the word that we speak. That yes, absolutely, our thoughts indicate the life that we have. And so I claim for each and every one of us that we live on the affirmative side of the street, that any old way of being limited or doubting, fearful or negative does not serve us anymore. And I know the way is made clear to release all of that, all of that negativity, all of that doubt, all of that fear. 
and we make room for the greater good of God to be expressed by means of us. And we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents and children, all of those we hold near and dear. We see them in our mind's eye and we surround them with love. We know that right where they are, the healing power of God is right there, surrounding them, filling them, uplifting them. We let our prayer be a blessing energy in the world that we live in. So wherever there is an appearance of discord, we claim the perfect peace of God. Wherever there is an appearance of lack, we claim the abundance of God. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. Because the truth is, we are all emanations of the Most High. And so with a heart that's full, I give thanks. Thanks that this is the truth, the truth that makes us more and more free. And I release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. So blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so all right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. power of seeing clearly changes everything, doesn't it? Oh, do you want to take Darius home with you, don't you? Yeah. Well, you can. Go to his website, DariusLux.com, and you can get his music, and you can learn all about it, the stuff that he's got going on. And again, thank you so much. And thank you, Sam. Thank you, Karen. You guys are just amazing and wonderful. <laughs> Fabulous. So I want you to know that there are several ways that you can give tithes and donations and gifts to this organization. Um, you can call the office at 818-762-7566. You can go to nhcrs.org slash give. You can text the word give to 818-457-3419. Y'all got that, right? Okay. Oh, here's a really good one. You can shop Amazon Smile and select our church, and you'll find us under Church of Religious Science, North Hollywood, as the charity of your choice. This benefits the church at no cost to you. It's such an easy, loving, perfect way to give. After the service, prayer is available, prayer with a practitioner. You can pray if you are here in person. Come up to the front, we have practitioners. Or on Zoom, there will be Zoom rooms for you, and just let that Zoom host know, and you will be held in that consciousness of knowing your wholeness and your perfection. You can also email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org. You can put a request in the prayer box. You see where I'm going here, right? We pray a lot and we are available and willing and hoping and holding all of you in love. You can call, one more, you can call in a prayer request to the office. Option four is what you're gonna press, okay. This Wednesday night, um, Reverend Sidney, oh, that's me. 
Uh, meditation at 6.50, service at 7 o'clock, and my topic this week is <sighs> My Big Fat Abundant God. <laughs> youth church is open. We welcome youth of all ages to church for our 9.45 a.m. service on Sundays. Women's group in person on, on Zoom, and today the guest speaker is Reverend Sydney. <laughs> we meet today at 11 o'clock in the youth church or on Zoom. Uh, men's group is meeting in person at 11 o'clock in the Ernest Holmes room. And we are looking for people to help host our services on Facebook Live. Now, it's relatively easy and it's a lot of fun. And if you're interested, please call the church office. We'll hook you up. Our bookstore, oh, here we go. If I had a drummer, we'd have a drum roll. Our bookstore, give us a, like a, a, there you go. That's the one. Our bookstore is open for 30 minutes after service today. <laughs> Yes, every Sunday we are now open for 30 minutes. I would love for you to stop by and shop from our selection of inspirational books, of cards, jewelry, artwork, and unique gifts. The Zoom virtual patio, for those of you playing along in our home game, before and after Sunday, Wednesday services, Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. So I want to invite you to visit our website, which is say it with me now, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all of our events, and to sign up for our weekly e-blasts and our monthly newsletters. Okay, I think that's it. Let's rise and sing the peace song, shall we? Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I, never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you.